Vapi have just released their brand new MCP server, and it's going to be completely changing the way that we interact with these voice AI agents on a day to day basis. We're going to run through two examples today, how you can use it within Claude. So again, more of that desktop application, as well as be able to run it through platforms like NA10 to be able to use it in some more automated workflows as well. But first things first, let's jump into the two demos that we're going to be running through today around using it with Claude as well as NA10. So there we go. We'll send this off. So this is that request with that phone number. Now it's going to be able to go through and understand the phone numbers we've already got stored in Vapi so that we can use this and is going to use that new phone agent to go through and complete that action. So as you can see there, we've got that call coming through. And if we answer it. Hello, I'm calling on behalf of my colleague who wants to let you know they'll be running late for your scheduled catch up on Friday. May I share some details about the situation? There we go. So as you can see, it's able to go through and actually provide that response straight away. Now what it should go off and do is find our contact for us, come back, and then it should be able to make this request for us. So using that AI agent to complete it. We go automatically triggered it for us and we'll get a phone call that comes through. So let's jump straight into it. So what we will have is all of the resources in the link below to get access to it, as well as all the documentation. So as you can see here, we've got some information around how to set it up, how to configure it and much, much more as well. But we're going to be running through all of this in the video today and I'll give my final thoughts at the end on if it's worth using it in its current state or waiting until it improves it as well. So as you can see here, we've got a couple of different tools that we'll be able to use. But as mentioned, we're going to capture that a bit later on. So as mentioned, the first part we're going to be doing is around Claude. So as you can see here, we've got the configuration steps. So what we want to do is come down here. We're going to copy this to clipboard for now. We're then going to close this down and we're going to open up Claude. Great. Once we're in Claude, we want to come up to the top. We want to open developer. You'll see that there's an enable developer function here. You just want to make sure that that is turned on. What we're then going to do is come to the settings within Claude. And what we should see is this screen here, and it'll give us the option for general and developer as well. We're going to click on developer. We'll see here that, for example, I've got NA10 configured, but what we're going to do is go through and edit the config. That'll open up this screen here. We're looking for this desktop, Claude desktop config JSON, and we want to open this. Now, as you can see here, I've got some information that's already in there. It may be blank if you've never used this before. That's absolutely okay. It doesn't matter because we're going to be going through it and showing you how to add in all of the different parts. There we go. I've just made it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Now, remember a bit earlier, we had this information that we wanted to add in from Vapi's documentation. Well, we're going to need to nest this in with our MCP servers. If you've not got this NA10, you'll be able to almost add it in straight away. So we just have this bottom part here and you'll be all up and running. You'll just need to add in your API token here. If we do want to use both NA10 and Vapi, we're going to need to change the config slightly. And again, all of the resources are in the link if you want to get access to it straight away. So there we go. So this is all nested together. So as you can see here, we've basically put it in an array. So it's got the ability to go through both. Now to add in your Vapi token, what we're going to need to do is come back into our Vapi account. Once you've logged in, we're going to come down across to where we've got organization settings and then API key. Now I've already generated one here called MCP demo. If you've not done it before, you want to go through and add a key. We're going to copy this one here. We're going to come back into our config file. There we go. And then all we're going to do is paste that in there. We need to do save and then we'll be able to close this down. So how do we know if it's been successful? Well, before we restart it, as you can see here, we've not got Vapi listed. If we come in here, we've also only got tool MCP tools available. Once we go through and add in the Vapi one, so we're going to restart our Claude instance, and that's going to be as simple as coming down to the bottom and then doing quit and then reopening it back up. There we go. I've reopened it back up. So now, as you can see here, we've got 10 tools available and it's going to be able to list it out here for us. So we can say, please list out the Vapi tools available. There we go. We'll be able to send this off and it will be able to provide us the response back. So again, Really good thing about being able to use the MCP side is now we're going to be able to interact with it almost in a nice, easy tone. So for example, here we could say, please list all of the assistants. We'll be able to send that off. And now what it will be able to do is come back. And as you can see here, it's just going to ask us to allow each time or we can do allow for chat. So it'll be able to go through and always execute it as we need it to. Again, just play around with it, what you're comfortable with. Again, because we're using that MCP server, 
it's going to go through and maybe be a little bit more risky if you need as you can see here we've got a couple of different ones that we've been able to use but how do we actually get it to go through and make a call well we're going to need actually to generate an assistant first to then be able to go and actually make a phone call because at the moment it doesn't enable you to create a call and pass off actually unique or new information so we could go through and have that context for that new conversation such as you know when would you like to meet up or i'd like to book a restaurant it currently can't do that it only triggers a call really good for maybe a sales use case where it's standardized and going out but not going to be more dynamic so we can say please create a new assistant as i want to let some know that i am going to be late for our catch up on friday we'll be able to send this off now it'll know how to interact with vapi automatically as you can see here it's going to go through and give it some specific instructions again we're going to say allow for this chat because it's going to go through and complete that action for us so there we go now it's come back and it said it's used open ai's chat 4.0 again we've got another video in the community around the gbt 4.0 nano i think that's a really good one coming out and what we'll be able to say is great now please can you ring alex and let him know his number is so there we go we'll send this off so this is that request with that phone number now it's going to be able to go through and understand the phone numbers we've already got stored in vapi so that we can use this and is going to use that new phone agent to go through and complete that action. So as you can see there, we've got that call coming through. And if we answer it. Hello, I'm calling on behalf of my colleague who wants to let you know they'll be running late for your scheduled catch up on Friday. May I share some details about the situation? There we go. So as you can see, it's able to go through and actually provide that response straight away. And again, we can go through and make all the changes that we want. But again, this is the way that we're going to be using it for now. More of a standardized template versus that dynamic putting it into an agent and then getting that response back. So again, you'll probably need to manage the amount of agents that get created in your account just so that you don't become overwhelmed with the number that are generated at the moment. Again, this is the first use case. Now we're going to run through how to use it within NA10. So once you've logged into NA10, the first thing you want to do is come down to the bottom. We're going to do settings. You want to come down to community nodes. Now I've already got NA10's MCP abilities stored. So what we'll be able to do is come through and copy this. If you're doing it for the first time, you want to come down and paste NA10 nodes MCP in there. Or if you want to see more information about it, again, all you need to do is come through and include the link below onto this package here, and you'll be able to walk you through exactly what it is and how it works. Now, again, at the moment, we're using this with a self-hosted -ho self version versus using it natively within NA10 itself on the cloud, but you could do it through that as you want again they're going through and making some changes there's some different abilities with the self-hosted versus the native one so just play around with it and find what works best for you if we come back across to our environment we've already got it set up and ready to go so now what we'll be able to do is come back into our workflow there we go and again if you want to get access to the resource of what we want to run through you'll be able to come into the community come across to classroom come down to where we've got voice ai We'll come into here where we've got VAPI MCP capabilities. You'll be able to download the blueprint as well as all of the different configuration files and all that sort of stuff that's stored in here as well. Once you've downloaded it, we'll come across, we'll do import from, we'll load up our JSON. And then as you can see here, it'll be all ready to go, but I'm just going to walk you through how you're able to use it yourself from scratch. So we're going to do chat trigger. So this is going to go through to our AI agent. So we'll come through to AI agent that we will be able to give it a system prompt as well, just so it knows how it's interacting. So we'll come back across to the community. We'll open it up in here just so that we can copy this across and we'll be able to paste it in here. And then what we're going to be able to do is add all of our different nodes. We're going to come through and add in our open AI model for now. So this is going to be chat GPT for O just to keep that cost down. We'll add in some chat history just so it makes it useful in the future. And then what we'll be able to do is add in our MCP element. So now if we search for MCP, we'll be able to use this second one here. So the client tool, the package we've installed. If you're doing this for the first time, we're going to need to come down and create a new credential where we've got command arguments and environment. We're going to come back across to the documentation. Or oh, sorry, this one here. We'll come down, we're going to do MPX. So we're going to copy this and then paste in the command. We'll come back across. We're going to do this part here. So VAPI. And then what we're going to do is put minus Y and then add in VAPI MCP server. Now what we need to do next is we're going to do VAPI underscore token equals. 
We're going to come back across to our dashboard. We're going to get our API key that we had a bit earlier. Again, don't share this with anyone else unless you've got one like we can see here that we're going to go through and delete a bit later on. Now we can paste this in the environment. And if we come through, we can do YouTube demo MCP. MCP agent will be able to do save. As you can see here, we've now got it successfully created and we've got it in to go through and list the tools. So now what we can do is come through and we can say, please, please list out all of the tools. And now it will be able to go through and do that information for us and be able to return it back. So that's where what we get on the left hand side here is that ability to do the actions and find out what it can do. And this is the part where MCP is able to dynamically interact with all of the different capabilities. So as you can see here, exactly the same as what we had in Claude. And if we were to go through and say, great, now please tell me all of the assistants available. Available, we'll be able to send this off. And again, what it will be able to do is come back and it's going to list out those tools again, because we haven't gone through it and given it the action side, which is where we're going to need to go through next and give it that ability to complete the action. We're going to do another one here. So we'll come down and do MCP again, MCP, we'll do client tool. Now we're going to change this to where we've got execute tool for the tool name. We're going to come through and make this dynamic. So we're going to use the from AI function to be able to do that. We'll do save. Now, if we run the same function again, what it should be able to do is go through and then actually execute that tool for us. So we'll just wait for this to come back now that it's executing. So there we go. So there we go on the left hand side here. We've got all of the different assistants available including those two that we generated a bit earlier, just around providing that late notification, as well as checking if they want to go out for golf, maybe to be able to do that as well. But if we're going to make a phone call, as we can see here, where we've got a get a call function, I found that it works some of the times, not 100% of the time, it seems to be a bit funny. What I would do instead is come through and do Google and then contacts, contacts. And then what we'd be able to do is come down and we'd be able to do get many. We would want one as the output, we want to return perhaps their names as well as their phone numbers. And then we're going to come through and use a query and we're going to let AI define that so that we can go and find that person specifically. What we'll then do after that is do HTTP and this is going to trigger the phone call for us. And what we're going to say in here is our request. So again, if you've never done this before, I recommend you come across to this API reference documentation. You'll see create a call and it'll give you all of the information that you need. So for example, we're going to copy this or we'll paste this in here. We're going to change it to a post request. We're going to change it to have headers. We're going to say that the first one is going to be authorization. Then we're going to do bearer, and then we need to add in our API token again. So we'll copy this and paste in there. We need to come down and then do content type, and then we're going to do application slash JSON. Then we're going to come down and send some body as well. Now I've got an example ready to go just so that we can show you how this works really quickly. But again, you'd be able to go through and change this to what you needed. What we could also do is instead maybe have the AI agent actually output it so that it would be able to generate the information that we need. So for example, if I do save, we'll be able to do make a call, save, and then we'll be able to come and say, please call Alex to ask him if he is free this Friday. Now what it should go off and do is find our contact for us, come back, and then it should be able to make this request for us. So using that AI agent to complete it, we go automatically triggered it for us and we'll get a phone call that comes through. And that's how I would look to use it at the moment, instead of trying to execute it through some of the MCP tools, because it doesn't quite work. That's a really quick walkthrough of just how to leverage MCP with VAPI and how it's going to start to change the game around actually being able to trigger those phone calls nice and easy. Stay tuned for more on AI agents, automation, and have a great day.